these streets the same way the birds run that NFC East. Johnson's weak, skins is trash. Cowboys every season, what that ass look? It ain't no competition. We here for those who listen. Want nothing but the facts. That ego coalition. We could give two fucks about your trash ass team. Our concern is about that black, that white, that midnight green. The feathers on the helmet, bro. Our hearts indebted. Fly equals fly. What it's about, bro? I said it. Look up. But I just gotta know one thing. Are you ready? No, I said, are you ready? What's up, Philadelphia? We are live broadcasting from the beautiful Bucks County Baseball Company in Bristol, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the first ever 4th and John Divisional Playoff Show. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Eagles Nation, lend me your ear because it doesn't matter whether you're a positive fan, whether you're a negative fan, or a realist. Your Philadelphia Eagles are one of the last four remaining teams in the NFC. They are on their way to the Super Bowl if they win two more home games. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? One game at a time. That's what the coaches have been preaching, Doug Peterson and this entire coaching staff. And that's what the players have been echoing in the locker room. One game at a time. Now, in order for this Philadelphia Eagles team to be successful in the postseason, they're going to have to catch some breaks. Let's face facts. They're going to have to catch some breaks in the things that they control and the things that they're out of that are out of their control. First thing that was in their control, they did everything during the regular season to set themselves up for the postseason. They got themselves a first round bye. They've got themselves home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Meaning, if they win this game, we host the NFC Championship game. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's take it one game at a time. Now, I know this is not the same Philadelphia Eagles team without Carson Wentz, and the Eagles are going to have to bring their A game in order to make up for that. But the things that are out of their control are the way the teams got into the NFC playoffs, the rest of the teams, and the seeding. More specifically, what happened during Wild Card Weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, we might have dodged the bullet there because we don't have to play the Saints in the first divisional, our first game of the playoffs. The third seed, the Los Angeles Rams, got knocked off, and now we have the Atlanta Falcons coming to town. That's a break. You can't tell me that there's any better position for the Eagles to be in as the one seed than playing the six seed. A team, by the way, which last year they not only beat, they dominated. And I know the Eagles had Carson Wentz at that point. But let's not pretend like last year's Carson Wentz is the same as this year's Carson Wentz. This year's Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate. He broke the franchise record for passing touchdowns in a season. Last year's Carson Wentz was just a rookie getting his feet underneath him. He he didn't play all that great. The Eagles won that game by dominating in the run game and dominating in time of possession. Now, normally you say... Let's take it one game at a a time for a team that is confident, for a team that is used to winning, for a fan base that's maybe feeling themselves a little bit and looking past our opponent. That certainly isn't the case here. Because while I listen to sports talk radio over the last week, while I scroll across the Twitter timeline, while I look out in the faces that are here seated at Bucks County Baseball Company, I I see a little bit of doubt. (laughs) <laughs> I, I see a little bit of concern. There's no doubt. I, 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 There's I no see, doubt. I, I, see a, doubt. I, I, I see a little bit of reservation. But I also know that come Saturday, this the people here at Bucks County Baseball Company, the people, the Eagles fans across the country, and more specifically, the Eagles fans at Lincoln Financial Field will be ready to don the colors and go to war. We're the home field advantage. So let's take this thing one game at a time. We're going to take this show one show at a time. We've got Eagles legend wide receiver Fred Barnett in the back. He's going to be joining us at about 820. We're going to be taking your phone calls. We're going to be getting the crowd involved too. People coming up to the mic asking questions to us and Fred Barnett. But right now I want to kick it off to my main main man. You see I had a week off there. My main man, (laughs) Gail Sessions. 
Eagle, or Gail Saunders Eagle Sessions on Twitter. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I mean, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. You think about this season. It's been the perfect script. I mean, you couldn't write a better script. It, it, you know, unfortunately, at the end of this uh, script, it got a little hay- haywire. I mean, yeah, man. now it's time to ad lib. We, we need Nick Foles to win a goddamn Oscar. <laughs> you know, or go and glow. So, I mean, hoping. this team has to rally around Nick Foles and, and do something special. I mean, this is this is it. This is this is a, a one game playoff this week. Mm-hmm. They got to bring their A game, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty damn excited, man. One game at a time. I, even though I'm a little nervous about Nick Foles, I am very confident about this whole football team. A very well rounded football team. Absolutely. You, you, you take it one game at a time. And I promise you, not looking ahead, but if you take it one game at a time, I promise you, there's only two games. You blink, and you're exactly where you need to be. Right. But you, ju- you just got to get there one step at a time. Working our social media is our boy, Philly Mike. Philly, how you doing, buddy? Doing all right, guys. And you know what? I feel really confident because I was watching that Falcons game, and that Falcons O-line is trash. I'm just saying point blank. They are trash. And I just have a really good feeling our guys journey again. Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Vinny Curry are going to go all out feasting and going after Matt Ryan. I think we're going to be laying them on the ground the whole entire game. But obviously, you got to worry about Nick Foles and the offense. But I just think our defense is really going to carry this game, though, for uh, us on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, you like that that interior pressure. They got to bring that heat. Uh, yeah. you know, you're talking about a guy that is not the most mobile guy on Matt Ryan. He likes to hang right tight in the pocket. That's where Jernigan and, uh, you know, Cox can really feast. They got to feast. Yeah. Now, one of the reasons why Eagles fans are confident about this game, at least the, the people in the panel here, and the, I was seeing a lot of heads nodding as I was looking around the room, because there's a lot of doubters out there. There's a lot of one and dons. <laughs> Nikki Foles is not going to get the job done, put in sud, all that ridiculousness. But one of the reasons that we're feeling confident, when the Eagles played the Falcons in 2016 at Lincoln Financial Field, they held Freeman to 12 carries at 49 yards. They had exactly zero rushing game whatsoever. Last year, the Eagles didn't have the league's number one rushing defense. If you're able to shut down the run, Uh, against the Atlanta Falcons, you now make Matt Ryan one-dimensional. Not to say that that dimension isn't going to work, because Julio Jones uh, had 10 receptions for 135 yards. He is capable of ruining your day. But what they did do is they took away the big play. They took away the big scoring Mm -hmm. play. They held him to, to, you know, 13-yard receptions here and there. They They didn't allow him to go over the top. This secondary is also built better than it was last year. I mean, Gabriel broke that one long play. But other than that, you know, they bracketed uh, Julio Jones and did a phenomenal job. And I think this 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 year's defense is, I'd say, a lot better than last year's. I mean, the the corners that we had last year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Nolan Carroll. Oh yeah, (laughs) Leon Calvin. Matt Matt Ryan had one interception in that game. You know who that was too. Carol? No, Leotis yeah. McKelvin. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Torch burned himself, Leotis McKelvin. Uh, Philly had 25 first downs. Atlanta only had 11. Now, you might want to ask yourself, like, why? Why, why would, is that number so lopsided? Why were the Eagles so dominant in that game? How were they able to control the time of possession for over 38 minutes? And that is simple. It is run the f- rock. rock. Last year, it was Ryan Matthews going over 100 yards. It was Darren Sproles, and it was um, Smallwood had like 70 yep, yards. Smallwood. Yep. Now, as talented as Darren Sproles is, and as much as we miss him in this offense, a LeGarrette Blunt, a Jay Ajayi, who's basically been shelved for a, a, a couple weeks as he... He's resting in the garage. Resting the knees, yeah. right? Re- yeah. Resting. Yeah. I love how stories like that get a little overblown. I mean, he's he's had, this thing about his knees has been going on since he came out of the draft. He was like a second round grade, but his knees that they they talked about his knees being uh you know had issues issues with with those, uh and that's why he dropped to the fifth round. But then he he surprised a lot of heads. His his knees have held up this long, and this 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 is the opportunity to just unleash the J train. Absolutely, and everybody's got to get on. Absolutely. And I, I can't take credit for this, nor, nor did I fact check it, but I, but I heard it on the radio, and everybody knows here that if you hear something on the radio, it's, it's got to be true, right? It, it, it's just like the internet. It's got to be true. I heard on the Marks and Reese show that the Falcons only allowed one 100-yard rusher this season. Care to guess who it was? Hmm. 
when the Miami Dolphins played the Atlanta Falcons, when Jay Ajayi. Jay Ajayi. And, and this is a very pound-the-rock team. When you take a look at the, the J-Train, just carrying bodies. When you take a look at LeGarrette Blunt just plowing through people. This is, a, this is a running attack that's meant to punish people. Punish people in the cold. Now, granted, for the tailgate on Saturday, right. we, we got mm-hmm. a little break in the weather. We got nice and sunny and 50 degrees. It's going to feel like maybe late October out there. But once that, sun, go, once that sun goes down at 430, you're, you're talking about a low with 25. It's going to start getting painful in there. Are you, are you going to be able to handle yourself? I know you get a little chihuahua cold. Uh, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, <laughs> you're going to be good? I'll be, I'll be sure to, uh, to dress appropriately. And even when, even when the Rams played the Falcons, Gurley had over 100 yards. So you take a look at the running back situation from last year. Obviously, much better. Designed for the postseason. Ground and pound. Uh, ram the ball down their throats. Um, when you take a look at the offensive line, I would say the offensive line is better. We don't have Brooks dealing with anxiety issues this year. He's gotten that under control. Thank now God. Pro Bowl. Pro and, and, a, and, a, and, and a Pro, pro Bowl. Jason Kelsey's playing at a, uh, at a Pro Bowl level. And we also didn't have Lane Johnson last year. Right. True. Yeah. And now we have Vitae taking over for Peters. I mean, we haven't mentioned Vitae that much at all, all year. He's, he's, he's showing off. He's been doing pretty good this season. He's I mean, he there. has. A, I mean, he's he has been, some been, games that. He, he, I mean, been, for what he is, I think he's been he, serviceable. Yeah, he was serviceable uh, backup. For but sure. Wisniewski has been out uh, for the last couple of weeks. I yeah. think him coming back really healthy helps out. Uh, you know, you you you've seen you know some of the damage that's been done with him out of the game. So, and and you take a look at the why. So th- so there's the running back position. There's the wide receiver position. Better this year than it was last year when we dominated Correct. the Falcons team. Now you take a look at the wide receiver position. I can't wait to ask Freddie Barnett. By the way, guys, Freddie Barnett's back there. If you want to get something signed. Yeah, let's, man, let's, get, yeah. let's give it up for Fred Barnett. Yeah, buddy. Man, is a legend. Man, is a legend in this town. Not only can I wait to ask him uh, about the wide receiver position and how these Eagles wide receivers have done this year, but also he experienced something that when Carson Wentz went down – for all of us old heads, I know maybe maybe you don't apply mm. up in the front there, but uh, it, it it kind of brought back memories uh, of the year it was when, supposed to happen for us. Uh, and Brando uh, went down. When Brando so, went down. Yeah, and and you know, Fred Barnett was there for that, so I can't wait to ask him. You know, his thoughts on on dealing with different quarterbacks and dealing with yeah. adversity with high expectations on that. He's going to be joining us up in a little bit. But last year you had DGB. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, who was in the psychiatrist's office, and, and DGB uh, could, couldn't even run routes. No, he couldn't even. And run he's routes. out of football at this moment. Yeah, he's he's, still, he's out of football. Getting DWIs. Oh jeez. <laughs> let, 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 don't, don't say that in front of Pukey, man. Don't, don't say, don't say. <laughs> oh, come on. Defensively, you didn't have guys like Barnett. You didn't have guys like Chris Long. Vinnie Curry's playing at a better level. You didn't have guys like Timmy Jernigan. And the defensive backfield, I mean, right. I, could, I could just go on and on about how awful that defensive backfield was. So, that, I mean, that's what gives me confidence going into this thing that the Eagles can go toe-to-toe regardless of Carson Wentz's injury or not. Because if you want to win this game, the formula is literally the same with better pieces. Yeah. I mean, coming into this, the Falcons are the team that you wanted to play. Uh, I mean, I wanted the Panthers – but, I mean, uh, you know, I'll take the Falcons. I mean, I didn't want the Rams either because you look at this Ra- this Falcons team, they're not as a fast, explosive offense like the Rams. This kind of offense, we could slow them down. Right. And then just play solid defense, and, and we got a plan. And don't you think the, the Falcons won that game in Los Angeles because of themselves catching a few lucky breaks? They did. Like, especially oh, yeah. on special teams, turning that ball over. Uh, drop passes by the Rams offense. Again, Gurley still went over for uh, 100 yards. Woods was 142 yards. I mean, they still made plays, but they didn't make them at the right time, and they coughed the ball up, especially in the special teams game. So if you look at it, everything kind of, at least for this game, one game at a time, broke right for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, this, this Falcon squad has a, a seasoned – I mean, they, they were there. They, you all saw them in the Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, Dan, I, I have a lot of faith in Dan Quinn. He's a good coach. They got a good, solid running game. Two solid backs that can catch out of the backfield. Uh, you know, 
you know, everyone talks about Julio Jones, gives him a lot of love, but Mohamed Sanu has been a solid receiver for Dude, them. Dude, on my fantasy team, yeah. Uh, he's, been, he's been great. Hooper, is Austin Hooper has been great for them. Those, those, are their, those two guys are their key weapons on short down yardage. So we got to get them in third and long situations because if, if you get them in third and short, those, you know, everyone talks about Julio Jones and the running backs, but those two guys really eat on third down. Absolutely. We're going to go to the phone calls before we miss, uh, we bring Mr. Barnett on the line. So we are going to go to, let's go to 302. Uh, yeah. Whoever has the 302 area code. We, we can't screen him because we're live on location, but you were on with fourth and John, baby. How you feeling? Hey, how are you? This is Alex. What's happening, What's up, man? Alex? How hey, you fe- not much. I just had three questions for you. Okay, fire away. So they say defense wins championships. Can the defense lead the way? Uh, number one rush defense in the league. Well, to answer to answer that question first, because if you ask all three, I'm going to forget all three of them. Because that's just, that's just, <laughs> it's just my memory isn't what it used to be. I think they can. All okay. right. Because when you when you get into this cold weather situations, running the ball is going to be imperative. The worse the weather conditions get, especially in cold, cold, cold Philadelphia, because let's face it, we don't have to travel anywhere else, passing the ball becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, you saw evidence of that when both Carr played here and when Prescott played here. They had trouble tossing the rock. Um, the ball gets a little harder. The, your hand control gets a, gets a little worse. So you're going to be forced to run the ball a little bit more than you would. And when you're going into the buzzsaw that is the Philadelphia Eagles defense, Fletcher Cox and Timmy Jernigan up front swallowing up that, those runs, uh, creating penetration, taking up gaps, and then those guys on the edges. Let's not forget the linebackers have been playing incredibly well to the run as well. And Brandon Graham playing the run. I, I, I dare you to... I mean, they've all been awesome. They've been all of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, he should be in the Pro Bowl. He should. I, I, he da- should I dare there. you to name another defensive end that plays a run quite like Graham. So that, uh, Gail, you want to touch on that? I mean, I think. We, and, uh, hold on, hold on. No, I think uh, the defense, the defense definitely can uh, shut these guys down. I mean, 79.2 yards, uh, this defense is, you know, uh, number one against the run. Um, I, I really think uh, they got a great shot, so I'm not, not really concerned. All right, second question, sir. Batter up. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to touch up on the first one. I'm not going to hold you up too long, but how about double teaming Julio? A must. A must. You can't, The way yeah. you lose this game is you let Julio go over the top and bust off you know, two long touchdowns and find yourself behind. Nick Foles in this offense is not necessarily built to get into a shootout with the Atlanta Falcons. The one thing you do not want to do uh, for A, the offense and the run game is, is, is get behind and get behind early. Number two, uh, I don't know if you were watching the Kansas City Chiefs game, but when uh, sometimes when they get down, uh, they tend to forget the fact that the run game even exists, and they start asking too much of their quarterbacks. That's just a Andy Reid tree disciple sort of uh, built in. Five, five carries to Kareem Hunt in oh, the second half. That is, that's the leading rusher in the NFL, and you get five carries. I pray to God Doug Pearson took notes from that game. I really hope so. Run the rock the whole entire time. Five carries in the second half. That's just. And it's funny. And, and, and it's funny too because what was it? The quarterbacks coach for the Kansas City Chiefs gets hired as the, uh, the Bears head coach. The Bears yeah, yeah. head coach. And when that news initially happened, I took a look at that and I went, "What? <laughs> Those idiots in Chicago? They hired a <laughs> Kansas City quarterback coach to be their head coach. What were they? Th- oh wait, we did that. Yeah, yeah. Us. You know. So so, so, <laughs> so so hopefully you know he doesn't get the Andyitis and decide to get away from the run because he gets down early. But that's exactly why you double. Julio Jones. Boom. Nailed that question. You got another one for me, bud? We lost him? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Third, third, third one's a charm. Let's, get, let's hear it. All right. So I've been hearing from other fan bases that playing at the link isn't considered home field advantage to them. What do you guys think? Gail, you want to take I that mean, one first? Look at our record at home. I mean, we've, we've we have been dominating, holding teams to right. like, like five, thirteen five points against Atlanta at the link. Listen, listen, home the home field advantage is going to be half the crowd, half the cold. I mean, it, it has to be that way. We, now that uh, you know, both Gail and I have become a little bit more well traveled, and, and perhaps uh, Fred Barnett can actually speak on this a little bit. 
Uh, the home field advantage isn't exactly the same as it is at Lincoln Financial yeah. Field as it was at Veterans Stadium in the 90s. It's a, it's a little less rowdy. Uh, it's not as noisy. Now, granted, we can cause false starts. We can cause um, uh, mistimed timeouts and stuff like that. But it's not Seattle. So to answer your question, it's yes or no. Would I rather be playing away? Absolutely no. not. I'd rather be playing at Lincoln Financial Field. But we're not playing in Seattle right now, so we can't take it as that sort of home field advantage. All right, thanks very much for calling in, my friend. We appreciate it. Now joining us, an absolute legend with the Philadelphia yes, Eagles, sir. former yes, wide receiver, Fred hey. Barnett. Hey. Yes. Wow. How you doing, sir? I feel so good about this. Everybody's clapping for me, man. Yeah, they well, a lot of people were clapping yeah. for you down at Veterans Stadium. You know, I, I never been to this part of Bristol. I've been in Bristol. It's nice, right? I was, it's I was my first time. JP, I was like, where am I right now? It's like, <laughs> no, it, 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 it's beautiful. And this place, if you've never visited Bucks County Baseball Company, it's this incredible. Pl this place is like a museum. You might want to buy up the place. Uh, it, seriously, do not come in here with more than like a couple hundred dollars in your pocket. Okay. I promise you, I promise you, it'll be gone. If you got bills to pay, do not. Hey, some, <laughs> of the, some, of, some of the pictures back there is incredible. Yeah. Like, he has to have ghosts walking back there. So. Probably. So Probably. I bet you some of those items are haunted. Did you see the picture of you and uh, and, and and JP there and his dad? Well, hopefully that's not haunted, but <laughs> no, no, it, 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 it was a very, it, it was a very uh, young. I did. I did. You did. That was cool, man. That was cool. To see, I, I to still, see you still here in the community is awesome. I, and I, I look a lot better than I did then, so I'm. I'm <laughs> that's all right, man. You look the same, bro. You, you, you you exactly I, just, I just color this in, yeah. you know, just to throw people off. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you and you me got both. a little gray in the beard. Now, speaking of people clapping for you, our last caller uh, brought up an interesting point. Yeah. He said that opposing fan bases don't consider Lincoln Financial Field to be the same type of home field advantage or, or, or big home field advantage. And I could certainly vouch for that being a yeah. season ticket holder at both Veteran Stadium and the Link. Is, is it less of a home field advantage at Lincoln Financial Field, in your opinion? I would say, I would say not. I, okay. I, I, you know, you're playing at home. Mm -hmm. And and the, and the uh, away team is playing away, mm -hmm. you know, and and to, I think that's an advantage for for the home team. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, it's not as rowdy as the vet was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you 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 did not want to play, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you did not want to play uh, in the vet as an opposing team. But uh, you know, you you got to come into a game like this thinking that hey, this is a you know, you lose, you're out, you know, you win, you you know, you keep going. You got to look in the mirror. And, you know, this is a situation, although, of course, it's a team sport, but each individual just has to look in the mirror and say, hey, look, this is my day. And that's what you have to do. And, and you know, Nick Foles has, has to do that. Mm -hmm. I think we've been a little, you know, skeptical about his, about his play over the, over the past few weeks. But uh, we, we, I think everybody thinks that he's capable of doing it. Um, but, um, you know, he, he, he's going to get the ball. He's going to touch the ball every play. Exactly. And I mean, if, if, if I was playing right now and Coach Peterson came to me and said, hey, look, we're going to throw the ball to you 25 times, I would float off to another planet. You wouldn't be able to talk to me. <laughs> I'd be so psyched about that. Nice. So now here, here's a guy who's going to touch the ball every play. Mm -hmm. You know, why not be psyched about that and, and take this team to another, you know, to, to another, uh, another game in the playoffs and closer to the Super Bowl? That's, that's an excellent answer. Now, when Carson Wentz went down, we, we, Gail and I were there at Los Angeles. Yeah. And seeing him go off the field and kind of with the towel around his head, we, we all kind of knew what was coming yeah. and it was going to be bad. And we kind of, our expectations went from the Eagles going to the Super Bowl yeah. was a probability to a possibility. And it conjured up, for us old heads with you know a little bit of, of course, gray, yes. gray in the beard, it conjured up uh, 1990, right? When, uh, when Randall Cunningham went down first game of the season, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be the Eagles' year. High yeah. expectations going into the season. Now, this happened a little later on. That happened first game of the season. But can you kind of speak to what happens to a locker room when the leader goes down? Do you get shook? Do you, do you, do you put your head down? Do you start second-guessing the entire season? I, or, or do you go out there and respond and bond together a little harder? Of course you have to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course you get shook. I mean, you're human. And, mm -hmm. and you're saying, hey, here's a guy who's taken us this far, and here we are now without him. Now we got to go, up, go, you know, with his backup. And um, you get shook a little bit, but at the same time, too, it's the time at that point for each individual to turn it up a notch, you know, to turn it up another level. You know, and, and the one thing that I really want to see um, 
out of this team is a nastier defense mm. because I really think they are capable of being, you know, the, the, the defense that we had in the early 90s. Really? Oh, God. Yeah, I, I, really, I really think so. That's high praise. And, with, and, and it starts with the defensive line. Once again, yeah. here, here's, here are guys now up front who are involved every play. There are times when, you know, the receivers are in the game and there's a running play opposite side to just kind of run off. Yeah. But the, the, the offensive line and the defensive line, they're involved every play. So, you know, here, this is a chance, I think, for them to kind of turn it up a notch. And, and, and of course, we're hoping so. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but you definitely get shook. Uh, of course, it was the first game for us, you know, that, that Randall went out. So, you know, that was a situation where, you know, we just had to move on. We had to move on but because we had, you know, 15 games to go. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a little different. And, and I, I would say, interestingly, I would say you're more shook in this position. Mm. Winning the, these many games because you know what Carson went brought, what he brought to the team. Yeah, you know, and at that point, you know, in the, in 1990, now you know Randall is Randall, and he goes out the first, he goes out the first game. So now we got to go, got to move on. But we know that Carson Wentz. I think a lot of us felt that Carson Wentz was taking us to the Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah, and when we were very confident about that. Now looking at this wide receiving group, yeah. I, I, you're you're a former great receiver for the Eagles. Why? Thank you. You know. <laughs> you know. Uh, what do you what do you what do you think about the the current roster of receivers that we have? I think I think they're pretty good. I I don't know everybody's name. I I know numbers. <laughs> I think they're pretty good. Jeffries, I think is, is yeah yeah. Jeffries, I think is 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 you know that guy, yeah. that guy who who needs to be on the field you know every play, uh, every 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 uh, series. Uh, I'm really impressed, and I'm 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 proud of Aguilar. Yes, sir. Yes. That that he big came, came out of came out of his funk. Uh, just you know, I, I guess he was looking at the back of the mirror. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what was going on to him, with him, but you know, sometimes you really have to like keep what's in your head in your head mm-hmm. and not speak on it. Right. I mean, there are times when I was like, okay, who am I right now? Let let me figure this out. Let me, and I went and I figured that out. I didn't say, oh, oh, fans, I don't know who I am right now. Who, do I, what do I do? <laughs> you know, I, I can't, I can't take that back backlash. But, but I'm really, I'm really proud of him. Uh, and I, and I think this this receiving core is good enough to be uh, uh, in the Super Bowl. Um, Torrey Smith, I, 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 I would love to see more from him. Of course, I, I think everybody yeah, would love to yeah. see more. I mean, he's from that him. burner. And I, and I and I think I think he's capable. I I think he had a few bad games this year. You know, he had some drop passes here and there. But I told one of my buddies, um, it's probably about three or four weeks ago, is before Wentz got hurt. I said the one guy I think is really going to make a difference is Aguilar, because mm. I think there's going to be some big downs. There's going to be some big situations, and boom, he's go, he's going to take the top off. And I and I really believe that. Okay. If given the chance. Now, there's a lot of outside noise right now going on with this team that they're underdogs. They're the number one seed. They got home field advantage throughout the playoffs. How would how would you feel if you're in their play right now in that locker room? What, what would you be telling all the rookies or all the veterans in your team in the locker room right now? You know, it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't make a difference. Right now, our, our, our record is nothing. We, we, we haven't played a game. Mm. And right now, we are the number one seed. Uh, look at this. Look at this situation. Would the Atlanta Falcons route now say, you know what? We're what ten and six. Mm-hmm. We're ten and six. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're yes. ten and six. These guys are thirteen and three. So we don't have a chance. You think they're saying that? No. So why no. the hell would we say anything different? Then they, then they, you know, they, they're not going to put themselves down. I don't. I don't. I don't. You, I can be a hundred, a hundred point underdog. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. This, this is, this is a big stage. This is an opportunity. You know not only to take your team, you know, to the next level, but, you know, you know you got fans. You know you got, you know, solid fans around you. Um, it's not that we flipped a coin and got here, you know. You earned it. We, we earned it. Yeah. You know, the Eagles earned it. And, it, it was, of course, it was Carson Wentz, but I, I think they made some plays on defense and some other yeah. guys made some plays. The running back made some plays. So, it, it's, it, I would, I'd say this. They belong here. So there's nothing really, not, nothing really to debate. It's like you know we're the number one seed, we're the best team in the league right now. Absolutely. So you 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 have to come and get us. No doubt. Now, now the, a lot has been made of the home field advantage having to do with the cold. You have some dome yeah. teams, the Atlanta Falcons, the New Orleans Saints. You have some 
warm weather teams, the Carolina Panthers who've been uh, eliminated, also the, the Rams who have been eliminated. But now I'm guessing when I get on microphone, I say, listen, it's cold, so it's going to make it harder on the quarterback, so they got to run the ball a little bit more. Can you speak a little bit? Because you've played in cold, cold, cold Veteran Stadium, and there's nothing as hard as a rock as that turf on Veteran Stadium Lambo, in the cold. Man. Lam- Lam- oh, you, <laughs> oh, you've played in the cold. Can you speak a, a little bit about it's, what the cold does to the passing game? It's 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 tough on the passing game unless you take some of the air out of the ball. Hey, oh. Oh. Did I, say I that? love it. <laughs> I didn't say. I didn't say that's that. A right that's a pro tip, right there. That's a pro tip. It's it's tough on the it's tough on the passing game. The ball is is like a brick. Yeah, and and you know it, it's it's. It's it's very hard to throw the ball. I mean, you you know you have a few catches here and there, but it's probably going to turn into, mm-hmm. you know, a pound pound the ball, uh, grind it out, grind it out. Uh, and at the same time, too, you mentioned the teams that are come come from you know from Miami, mm-hmm. you know Jacksonville, Atlanta, uh, playing in the dome when they when they get here in that that cold weather, man, it's it's a different, it's a little different. It's, it's a little real. different from for. Now, now, you played with the Miami Dolphins, correct? I played with the Dolphins, yeah. All right, so when you were with the Miami Dolphins post-Philadelphia Eagles and you had to travel back to a cold-weather stadium. Oh, it say, was different. Could you tell the guys in the locker room were like, what the hell is this? Oh, yeah, this? for sure. Yeah. I mean, they, they wouldn't say it on the field, mm-hmm. but they're out there shivering and shaking, and it, it's a little different. <laughs> I can know? relate. It's, it's, def- it's definitely a little different. I mean, it's, it's something that they're not used to. Uh, you know, and, of course, it's, it's the playoffs. It's, it's you, you, you in or out, and it's just – you know, it, as I mentioned, of course, it's a team sport, but, you know, individually, every guy, everybody got to, you know, individually got to look in the mirror and say, hey, you know, I'm going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, uh, the Eagles are capable, definitely capable. And I, I actually, I'm, I'm picking them to win. Uh, hey, so. there, you uh, there you go. There you go. All right. We like, like it. We like it. Wait, wait, wait Anybody think different? Anybody think different? Anybody think Good, because the door's right over I mean, there. You if you know, think, no, no, think no, different, no. the door's right over there. No, I, 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 I'd, like to, I'd like to know why, if you did. It's, it's, it's no big deal if, if you think different. I mean, because right now, I mean, you, you, you got some skepticism about, about uh, foes. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you have to. Yeah, I mean, oh, you well, have deservedly to, so. You know, you have to. I, 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 I was a little disappointed in the Cowboys game because I, really? I, I needed, I wanted to see more. You know, a guy was asking me about. It. He's like, "Why are you disappointed? We didn't need that game." I said, "Let me, let me, I said, let me give you an uh, an analogy." Okay. So you know that guy that you know is going to win a hundred meters, but in those preliminary right run, you, he shows you, "I'm going to win." and He just slows up. So I just needed a few plays to, to, for the Eagles to say, "Whoa." You know, yeah. we can kick gas if we want want to. So, but we're going to let you have this game. I just got go, you. Just go ahead. But I just didn't see. I just didn't. I didn't see that. You didn't see that Usain did, Bolt yeah, turning, see, turning around, turning and smiling, in and, smi- and, yeah. then, and then just say, "Hey, you know what? Yeah. I'm just trying to place. You know, I'm in the playoffs. I'm just okay. going to let you go ahead and, and, right. and do your." But and I, and I needed to see that, and and hopefully, I, well, it, I hope I don't see, see that Saturday. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, yeah, hopefully, they're, they're grabbing I mean, the think, by the throat. Did you think you know this team is like they've been dominating all season? Do you think they were feeling themselves at the end of the season, like they had? They had it wrapped up. The season wrapped up. Do you think they? That's the thing. I don't know. We're not, not in the locker room. That's see. Yeah. That, that's that's one thing. I, I hear a lot of guys talking. I you know listen to the radio sometimes, and and I've been in the locker room when right. we knew that we had it, yeah. and everybody's like, "Well, I don't know." They they, they don't know what we know. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. So so I don't. I can't answer that question. But at the same time, too, you know, it's it's you know, it's a situation where, where I I think that you know I. I don't want to say this is a positive thing, but I but the, but the injury to Wentz happened in a quote unquote good time, to whereas you know, uh, yeah, a couple there, was weeks. A, there was a few weeks where yeah. we could just kind of get in the rhythm. So hopefully we're in the rhythm by <laughs> by by Saturday. Now, now I would not uh, I would not be able to forgive myself uh, if I did not ask you why you're on this show and, and thank you so much for for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having and, me. Yeah, absolutely. About that play that will always be ingrained in the in the minds of Eagles fans and we'll vision it and talk about it forever really and that was Randall Cunningham's 95 yard touchdown pass to you with yeah. Bruce Smith can you walk us through that play because I'm, I'm, I'm watching I watched a highlight of it today there's yeah. no way Randall 
was able to look downfield and know exactly where you were with Bruce Smith, a Hall of Fame defensive end, just breathing down his neck, duck that, and then chuck it up in the air. Can you kind of walk us through, like, what was the play call? What was the thinking there? Was it just a chemistry thing you had with Randall? I know Randall was scared. I wasn't, but. Because <laughs> he was a lot closer to Bruce Smith than I was. Yeah. But uh, I had a, I can tell you exactly what I had. I had a, I had a, I had a post route. Mm-hmm. And Calvin Williams had a uh, a uh, dig route, which is a, a deep end, like a 20-yard end, and I had a post. So I can remember coming off the ball and just, you know, kind of burning it and then just kind of looking back. And I just see bodies flying everywhere, but I'm listening for a whistle. So I literally just kind of start jogging. Right. So I'm like, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> So I don't hear a whistle, and I see I see everybody just kind of running around. And I think at that point, with me looking back, Randall was to my left because I was on his right side. Me looking back, he was to my left. And so when he ducked Bruce, he went he went back to his left, mm-hmm. which was my right. Mm-hmm. And once he went back left, I saw him just kind of come away from everybody, and he did this. And once he did that, I kind of took I kind of took off, Boom. and the ball was in the air. And uh, Williams was his last name. I, I think he's. I think he was from Mississippi State, uh, the defensive back at the time. And he he mis kind of misplayed the ball, right. and it just kind of, you know, fell right in my chest. And you know, and, and I just Hussein Bowder all the time. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. That, that's a that's a play that'll leave uh, live certainly forever in Eagles. I get, I get, if I had a half a penny, for every time everybody it. asked me about that play. <laughs> I, I would have taken a limo. Everybody got a half a penny. A Everybody limo. got yeah. a half a penny. <laughs> and probably the other one, the other question is, how did you come up with the nickname Arkansas Fred? Like who, how did that, how did that happen? Well, that was that was from Buddy Ryan. Okay. Now there were there was another Fred. I can't remember Fred's last name, but Fred was from. He was from a school, in the SWAC conference. I can't remember his last name, but it was Fred Barnett and then and the other Fred. So the Eagles were they were interested in him as well. So when they spoke of Fred, Buddy was like, well, which Fred is it? <laughs> you know, which Fred are you talking right, about? Right. And they said, well, Fred Barnett or Fred, you know, or whatever, Fred, Louisiana Fred, which he called him Louisiana Fred. He said, okay, let me, let me, let me, you know, you know, figure out which is which. I'm going to call him Arkansas Fred. I'm going to call him Louisiana Fred. So that's how I became Arkansas Fred. And, of course, they direct drafted me in the uh, third round. I heard you almost became a. You thought you were going to become a cowboy. Ooh, Is that true? Ooh, 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 well, the ooh. Cowboys were Cowboys and the Jets were two of the teams that kind of looked me now and shook my hand and said, "Hey, we'll see you in Dallas or we'll see you in New York." And as a matter of fact, the Cowboys before they drafted before my uh, my draft took Alexander Wright from uh, who's a good friend of mine, Alexander Wright from Auburn. Okay. And I can't remember who the Jets took, but uh, they missed out. Oh. <laughs> they, 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 they certainly did. Now, before we got a little bucket of tickets, we're going to give oh, we away got a bucket 20, of tickets. 20, but before, before we get to that, does anybody in the audience have a question that they would like to ask? Uh, Fred, oh, we got a lot of questions. Hey, Fred, uh, you're, you're an all-time favorite of mine. I just want oh, to say, thanks, man. My dad, me and my dad watch football every day growing up, and, and I was at that age when watching you guys play. Y'all must have had a lot of reruns. You watch it every day. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a dream come true. Sundays were like the best day in yeah. the world. Yeah, right? cool, man. Uh, Yes. Is our secondary going to be, with the D-line pressure, is our secondary going to be capable to at least hold them the game so that we're, we're in it in the fourth quarter? Or is this going to be Julio Jones 175 yards and a touchdown, Sanu's going to have five big catches in the first half, or, or are young quarterbacks going to be in there? Well, this, I think this is a situation where, of course, you know, with it being a playoff game, you really never know, of course, what's going to happen. Uh, with any game, you never know. You know, any given Sunday, you know, is a situation in the NFL. And uh, here's my my comment is that we are capable. We're capable of stopping Julio Jones. We're capable of, of getting pressure on the quarterback. We're capable of, of of putting Matt Ryan in a situation where you know we can have a turnover too. And and that's all I need to know. If we're capable, if we have the ability to do it. Now it's now it's, it's it's at a point now where it's mental. You got to go out and you got to make it happen. Let me tell you something. The biggest the biggest uh, change for a college athlete, a college football player in the NFL, is to understand that when he was playing college football, 
about two or three guys he was playing against on the field at one time was probably be a, a professional football player. When you're in the NFL, everybody's a professional football player. So at any given time, you know, anything could happen. If the Eagles right now and the Falcons did a walkthrough of their plays, there would be no mistakes. But guess what? There will be mistakes my, uh, uh, Saturday. You know why? Because it's going to be a mental part of the game. It's, somebody's going to get hit upside the head. Somebody's going to get pissed off. And somebody's going to want it more than the other person. So that's what, that's what it comes down to. So we're capable. If they don't do it, heck, they, they, they just didn't do it. But it doesn't mean that they're not capable of doing it. We're, we should win this game. No yeah. doubt about it. We should win. It. If they don't win this game, it, it, it should be a, it's a shame because we should win this game. Absolutely. Love the positive. I think so. Positive. We'll take, we'll take one more. Jeff. Jeff Rim, huge fan growing up. Thanks, man. Through the 90s, like, yeah, I got a lot of gray in the beard. Yeah, I see. Too, so appreciate you coming out. Um, just tell me simply, the Eagles will win su- or Saturday if? The Eagles will win Saturday if, if they have no turnovers on offense and if the defensive line has at least four sacks. That, that's a, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be as specific as I can. No, that, that was, a, that was a, a, a perfect and quick answer. And so we'll get, we'll get to your question real quick before we pull the card, before okay. we pull the ticket. I have, like, one question. Do you, like, what receivers like, do you think like, made more of an impact during the, the Super Bowl run season? Terrell Owens or Alshon Jeffrey? What, what wide receiver would have made a, a larger impact to their team um, as, as far as that position is concerned, Terrell Owens or Alshon Jeffrey? I'm th- – let me understand the question. I, I, you, uh, you're saying – like like And T.O. And then what, like, who were better? Alshon Jeffrey or McNabb and T.O.? Oh, I see what oh, you're what saying. Combo. I what, see what, what you're co- saying. What would combo would you rather have? That, that's a good one. <laughs> because it was, what? Well, 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 we're talking about Wentz. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. For, well, of course, Wentz is not there, but I, I would rather have Wentz than Jeffries. Ooh. For sure. Ooh, hot take. Yeah, because Wentz. Love it. Saying it with his chest. Because <laughs> Wentz, Wentz, Wentz won't be throwing up in the other one. Oh! Donovan, you know I love you, Donovan. <laughs> You know I know I love you, Doug. That's right. He, he's never going to see it.